Hello, my name is Daria Graham. I'm going to be talking about John Caldwell Holt. Um, he was born in New York in 1923, uh, and then he later died in uh, Massachusetts in 1985. Uh, John Holt was, he grew up in New York City. He was born to a upper middle class New England family. Um, he went to private school most of his life between early um, childhood all the way up until when he went to Yale uh, University for um, engineering. That's what he studied. Um, something that was interesting um, was he alternated between private schools in New York City and private schools in Switzerland, which I thought that was really interesting. Um, so just kind of giving the economic background that he... Him, his family was well off. They were able to send him to these private schools and learn and do really well uh, education-wise. Um, he formed the belief that children should make the decision where, what, when they learn um, different material, um, and that school was a confinement place. Um, he actually said that children go to school uh, to become to become stupid, that's what he said. He believed that school did not educate students in the way that they should be educated. He believed that school limited the children in what they were learning and how they were learning. Um, he was a strong believer in um, unschooling, also known as homeschooling. Um, during the time when he wrote uh, two of his really famous books, they are How Children Fail in 1964, and then that was followed with How Children Learn in 1967. Uh, he basically took the approach that um, students needed to make the decision, children needed to make the decision of when and what they were going to learn, and being at home was the best place for them to do that, that they were going to thrive educationally um, and do really well at home rather than being forced to go to school. Now, there are a lot of critiques with that thinking, um, one of the critiques being that the parents of those children felt as if their parental controls were being taken away about their child um, because homeschooling and unschooling was becoming a very popular thing. They believed that, you know, now this man and um, is taking away the parental right of, you know, the parent to decide how the student is going to learn, where they would like to send them to school, and, and all those kinds of things. Um, another critique that John Holt faced was feminist groups. So during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, women's, women were getting the right now to vote. They were getting the right now to be in the workplace. They were um, having financial freedom with where they did not have that before. So a lot of women felt as if they were going to have to take a step back in all of the progress they had made for women's rights. They were afraid that they were going to have to um, come back to the home and then teach their children when they just got this freedom to be able to go into work and then send their children off to school so that they didn't have to stay at home. So that was another critique that uh, John Holt faced. Um, homeschooling or unschooling is the belief that a child is going to learn when they want to learn and how they want to learn. A personal critique of that and John Holt's belief is I believe that school provides structure, it provides grounding for students. Now I'm not saying like all curriculum should be followed and we have to learn a certain way because that creates autonomy and I don't think school should be an autonomous place, it should be a place where we allow students to get creative and be creative and have these creative spaces. So I feel as though with this belief being at home, there is no structure because the child then makes all of the decisions when it comes to education. Um, there's no grounding and I feel like public school or even private schools provides that outlet for students um, to one, make new friends, learn what is socially appropriate, what is not socially appropriate, what is going on within our world, um, but also discussing it in a non-biased type of way. Because um, I feel like when you're at home and you're with the people that you're most comfortable with, there comes a lot of biases with that. Um, so just kind of forming your own opinion in a school 
I think is great because there's just there's nothing it's just a kind of a blank canvas that they give you and this is the information and they let you take it how you want to take it um, so that's one of my personal critiques with John Holt but he was a really strong advocate for homeschooling groups and he was a really strong advocate for students rights and I totally agree with that I believe that children need to be heard within a school or from homeschooling it's the child that's learning um, not the adult so we need to make sure that we're listening to the child's needs whether it be in a school building or whether it be in a homeschool space uh, John Holt really truly believed that the child should have control of what they were learning and how they were learning and he gave a voice to children when they had never had that before so that was a positive that's a positive aspect of John Holt he really fought for children's rights and the rights to let the child decide uh, that was a really positive thing that John Holt did in his educational thinking